Evolution Radio, freedomslips.com. You don't need to expect us. We're already here. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. Hi, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're live here with Paul, uh, with me, Paul Stevenson. Uh, and I'm delighted to say I've got Kevin McDonald with us on the lines. All right, there was a couple of things I wanted to talk about. The, the, uh, the first one was probably... Uh, let's look at Amber Rudd, where we have, uh, quote, I want to make sure those who view despicable terrorist content online, including jihadi websites, far-right propaganda, and bomb-making instructions face the full force of the law. I'm sure you've probably covered this in the Occidental Observer, where they've squeezed <laughs> far-right propaganda in here, uh, along with uh, jihadi websites and bomb-making instructions, which are two very specific and probably dangerous uh, things in with far-right propaganda. Um what are your thoughts on that? Obviously, uh, you have the first. Amendment. They're clamping down uh, in the UK. Yeah, so we we, we did, the actual observer we did have a an article by Tobias Langdon about that specific uh, situation over there. It really is astonishing to think that that simply reading and downloading uh, quote far right material could put you in prison for up to fifteen years. Uh, it's just an um, incredible uh, phenomenon. You know they're. And as you suggested there, it's sort of trafficking, trafficking on the fact that they put the the, the terrorist uh, stuff in there. They, uh, but but they they threw that in, and obviously very intentionally. Uh, yeah, the UK uh, really uh, is, is a police state already, uh, and uh, terrifying what's going on over there. Yeah, and immediately when you read this, it uh, it discourages you from being too bold with uh, your own uh, rhetoric, um, uh, because you know you have to be very careful here. I mean, it's very ambiguous far right propaganda, and I suppose they can. It's deliberately ambiguous, so they can use this uh, with expediency. And the other thing is, I mean, it's just it, it's kind of literally sandwiched in between something as specific and dangerous as jihadi websites and bomb making instructions. Exactly. Uh, it doesn't belong there. I mean, what even, I mean, how do they, you know, what is far? Again, they probably have, leave it deliberately ambiguous so they can use it and, and target who and when they need to, you know? Yeah, I think, I think um, you know, if they had worded it by saying uh, that, that it was explicitly linked to actions that are terrorist, uh, somebody blowing up something, well, I can understand that. But when you're talking about, uh, re- reading blogs and downloading material and watching videos, uh, that, that's, that's just obviously an infringement of free speech. And, you know, they, they, like, for example, on Oxford Observer and all the websites that I know on the quote far right, uh, we don't advocate violence. Uh, so uh, it's really not an issue for terrorism. Uh, this is just an excuse to, as you say, to make people careful, to make people shut up, to stop criticizing immigration stop criticizing muslims or anything like that that's that's really what the program is yeah exactly and i mean if if i was really cynical because i think i might even have spoken to you about this the last time we did our show uh did a show those those of us on the right who are you know calling for you know extra you know clamping down on islam they better be very careful because uh, i mean I, I i i think that all of this including p- possibly allowing these terrorist attacks to go go ahead are so that they can bring in these, you know, clamp down on far right propaganda as if it's just another part of extremism, you know. Um, but really, Absolutely. that's yeah, yeah. Absolutely, that's what it's all about. It's bringing the, the far right in, yeah, uh, under the the guise, the cloak, as it were, of something that really is a menace. And, you know, it's a menace in every way. Immigration of the Muslims is a menace, but uh, you know, their involvement in terrorism is a huge menace to public safety and feelings of security just walking down the street in london or uh, other other big cities in uh, in the uk is uh, you, you've got to be a little worried about that now uh so yeah but but where does that come from the far right well you don't you don't see that 
Uh, yeah, they seem to be using this. Extre- they're really getting a lot of mileage out of this extremism to minimize, um, uh, you know, this uh, real genuine threat and a much wider ubiquitous problem within Islam. And then to then amplify and exaggerate an almost non-existent, uh, you know, far right extremism threat. Certainly there is no f- uh, far right terrorist groups that I know of. I mean, who who are these people talking about? Well, you know, I don't know any far right terrorist groups that are actually a, a threat to people's safety in terms of violence. I don't know either. You know, it's, it's, there's none of them that I know of. In the United States, we, we've had these, uh, these, these rallies lately. And in every case, the only violence has come from people, counter-protesters, attacking the protesters. You know, in every case. So, um, you know, we're, we're not the violent ones. Uh, it, it's just, it's just uh, an attempt to, to shut down the, the you know, criticism of immigration and Islam. I mean, these are the big threats to the establishment. I do think that that they are worried, and and they're using any excuse they can to clamp down on this. They and um, you know they see what happened in Austria with that with that election, and uh, you know we see what's going on in Eastern Europe where they're really standing up. Uh, you know the the AfD in Germany uh, got uh, considerable support there in Bundestag. I, I think things are turning. They can see that the EU is simply, you know, the, their immigration policies and promotion of multiculturalism and all this just. The absolute uh, destruction of the West um, is simply, you know, something that they are, are very, very concerned about uh, in terms of you know, preventing the critique of that. And the only way they can do that is to have a police state. I mean, that's really where all this leads to. Multiculturalism inevitably is going to lead to a police state. I mean, now if you have any kind of celebration like, you know, New Year's Eve or something like that, you've got way more police than you used to have. You've got way more surveillance, and now you've got laws like this. Uh, they just want to absolutely shut it down. Uh, any kind of criticism of this, they know they've they've imported this absolute disaster, but they just want they, they can't they can't go back on it. They're just doubling down. And the only way they can double down is to is to increase security and make it an authoritarian state. Yeah, ironically, they're, 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 the, the, the sheer aggression and the number, uh, the numbers and, and the sheer scale of the whole operation, and including the Islamization and these bombing attacks and everything else, ironically, Islam might, might in a strange way, save the West because it is, it, it's developed, you know, it's, it's, it's encouraging and, and it's triggering a severe reaction to it. I mean, we had yeah. a... I think there was about I think there was as many as thirty five thousand people in June marched in London for a, a very peaceful, very quiet march as well uh, against Islamic terror in uh, in the UK because we've had a we've had a lot of it, and yeah. there was no no mainstream media coverage of it at all. <laughs> That's part of the of the uh, of this establishment reaction. They don't cover things like that. Uh, they they they, uh, they certainly minimize uh, this, this thing. Labor times that there is a some Muslim terror, they, they say, well, it has nothing to do with Islam, and these people are not real Muslims, or, um, or, or they worry about the backlash way more than they worry about the terror. Uh, you know, that's the sort of reaction that they get. Yeah, I remember after one of the terrorist attacks here, I can't remember exactly which one it was, but on LBC, London Broadcast uh, Radio, um, the very next day, I couldn't believe it. They had a they they had a show basically saying, "Have we underestimated Islamophobia?" And I'm thinking to myself, "What <laughs> has somebody <laughs> just exactly murdered?" That's exactly what happens. Yeah, yeah. You know, has somebody just murdered some Muslims, or or, or 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 did I get it wrong? It was actually Muslims who murdered our people. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's the reality now. That's just, just amazing. Yeah, and they and they churn out some you know vulnerable looking little young Muslim women on the BBC. You're sort of saying it's not all of us, right. and these people don't represent all of Islam. You know. Um, of course, they don't represent all of Islam, but <laughs> you have a significant percentage. And and why bring them in any? What are they really contributing to, to, to Britain right now? Uh, what, what are they contributing anywhere? What, what I see are very high levels of, of non-participation in the workforce, high levels of criminality, sexual assaults. Come on, and th- this is not helping Europe in any measurable way. They, they, help, they talk about, well, we need immigration to to take care of the old people in Europe. <laughs> These people are not going to take care of the old people. They're going to be a drain on public services forever. It's, it's just an insane. It, it's just a, it, really, you know, it's it's done by these people who are hostile to the traditional people and culture of Europe. They can't stand, you know, Christian Europe as it was. 
say in 1950. Uh, and and that's, that's the, the problem that they have. They want to destroy that and they are doing a very good job of it. They are doing a very good job of it. And also, uh, irritatingly, they, they, they present it just as you said about, uh, you know, people are the, we are an aging population and they talk about the death of Europe, its culture, its heritage, its peoples, its history, as if it's just an inevitability. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You see, you can't, you can't stop this, right? I mean, they are, that's the same thing in America. We see, you know, that this is inevitable. Just get used to it. Uh, take it. You know, uh, there's, there's nothing we can do. And, you know, there is there are a lot of things we can do to at least put it off and we can start repatriating people. I mean, population transfers have been done throughout history. After World War II, there was massive population transfers. Nobody complained about uh, the fact that, when, that all these Germans were, were taken back from, uh, to, to, from Czechoslovakia and other places in, in Eastern Europe. So, I mean, it can happen. Uh, and uh, it's happened many times in history. But, you know, it just takes the political will. And I do think, you know, we're seeing glimmers of that. People are, are fed up. And that's, but that's, again, why they, they have to clamp down. They just cannot let this thing, the, this reaction to this disaster uh, come to the surface, and that, that's the worst nightmare. Well, yeah, I mean, ultimately, I'm sure you can uh, agree with. I mean, my definition of it, it's an invasion, and, and it's a it's yeah. a more it's a more it's a more dangerous invasion than even a traditional invasion because so many people fail to acknowledge and recognize it as an invasion, and they're sitting by and actually embracing it and welcoming it on for many of them on the left, you know. Yeah, we see, we see these signs: refugees welcome. Oh, uh, I mean, they're just welcoming their own. Uh, demographic replacement and they they really you know if they if you ask these people what 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 would europe be like in 50 years they they would not envision anything like what's what what i i think is quite reasonable uh, where you have a you know a very aggressive and uh dominant or semi-dominant muslim uh minority uh in, imposing restrictions on all kind of women and on free speech and homosexuality, the whole thing, the entire liberal culture would go down the drain if this happens. Do you think Africans care about liberalism? Uh, they, they don't, and, and they're, they're not going to contribute anything to Europe, economically, socially. And yeah, but many of those on the left, though, the mind control seems to be so powerful that they will defend Islam and religious freedoms you know, to the to their own destruction, and yet, ironically, these same people are very quick to take a, a Christian who doesn't want to bake a, a cake for a homosexual marriage to court and bury his exactly. career. I just don't. I don't understand. It's such a disconnect. Uh, Christians are so much more tolerant to even homosexuals, mm -hmm. and even though it doesn't affirm those things, they just seem to be. I just, I, I don't get it. I mean, I just, as you said, I mean, if these people are going to be, the women will be, will be, they suffer the most probably under uh, uh, Sharia law and those types of things. Um, they certainly will. And, and yeah, we, we Westerners are prone to individualism. We don't, uh, you know, we don't take, take to these collectivist groups the way these Middle Easterners do. We don't have a natural, strong group identities, but, but we do develop these things when we really feel under threat, and I think more and more people are. But as you say, I mean, what, what's so astonishing, these feminists who are on the left, and they see, you know, any rational person could see the, the huge increase in sexual assaults. I mean, I read statistics like 90% of the rapes in Sweden are from these migrants, um, you know, and the, the, yet they don't oppose migration. Because diversity, you know, come somehow has become so entrenched as part of a leftist self-identity, they cannot pull the trigger on that. They they're just gonna, you know, pretend it doesn't exist. I guess it's just an amazing problem. Yeah, and I mean, I sometimes I wonder what is wrong with our women because they just even though even those who are not feminists, they seem to be embracing these sort of these Muslims and yeah. these other minority groups coming in. And yeah. I think there was an incident I think a couple of years ago where there was some Swedish nationals descended on a group of uh, Muslims who had been, you know, many of whom had been raping some Swedish girls, and uh, well, they took them to task because the the security and the police services and the police are so overstretched in Sweden. They yeah. took the law into their own hands to protect our women, and the women came out and said, "We don't, we're, we're not your women, and we don't need your protection." I mean, and, and that, <laughs> on a tribal nature, that cuts very. <clears throat> yeah, I've seen incredible statistics, and from Sweden that they cannot even investigate most of the rapes there. There's so many, they're completely understaffed. So I, I can understand why why these people would want to protect their women, but uh, 
Because women, I, you know, I, women tend to be, you know, nicer. They're more, uh, they're warmer, more affectionate, and and they're and they're more conformist too. So they, when you had the the dominance of this ideology of multiculturalism, and it's seen as a moral good, where they want to be good people and they want to be nice to other people. Um, that is, that's a recipe for disaster. They, they, they favor these kinds of things. And, you know, they, they really are not thinking clearly about what the future is going to be like for, for people like themselves uh, when, when this really comes to a head in, in a couple of decades, when, when, when whites start becoming minorities in, in these countries. I mean, it's just going to be um, a disaster for women, but uh, they, don't, they don't register that. Yeah, as I say, I mean, you know, this this group of Swedish uh, nationals, you know, they they descended on this group and were violent towards them in the absence of police doing anything. And the women turned around and said, "We don't need your help. We're not your women." I mean, <laughs> so so you, so you so then you think, okay, well, fine, and well, we won't protect you then. Well, you know, where is their instinct to be a group group instinct, and where is their instinct to be to be protected by their own people rather than favoring and getting into individual Muslims? Uh, it, it is depressing, um, but uh, extremely depressing. And you know the, the the scandals in the UK with Rothram, the sex grooming scandals. I mean, it just doesn't. You see all these people on the left. I, mean, I think Rothram, the, the 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 council was dominated by the Labour Party. Uh, they, they don't. They they didn't do anything about it. Uh, it, it was just completely a non non-existent non entity. I think. One minister in the Labour Party had to resign, didn't she? Because she started saying yes. we had to deal yes. with the fact that there's an Asian crisis here. Uh, well, yeah. she had to resign the next day. I mean, that's it. I did a YouTube video about it. I was astonished that she she basically had to resign for telling the truth. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And this is the great liberal uh, Labour Party. And also, I mean, it almost seems like every day, um, you know, th there was a, there was an incident last week. And I, I don't I don't even want to really tell you because I know it breaks your heart as it does me. But there was there was a young girl leaving a nightclub in Tyra Hamlets, uh, which is oh, in the borough of East yeah, London. Yeah. She was raped three times on the way home on three different occasions. Yeah. Uh, and, the, and again, the press didn't even mention that it happens to be that one of the biggest Muslim populations in the UK. It's got 40 mosques and this girl was raped three times and drugged and everything. And by the way, the, the, the police then put out a very vague CCTV image of the guy uh, and a picture later came out where he was clearly your typical Muslim looking, you know, bearded uh, figure. And, and they didn't even mention that he was a Muslim. And, and I mean, it, just, it goes on and on, but um, and there yeah, I, I, think it's, I think in Sweden, they, 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 they don't have, statistics by perpetrators according to ethnicity or religion so uh, you know, most of the, the you know you have rapes but it, they're not reported as anything having to do with immigration multiculturalism islam uh, african uh, males and, and so on and nothing it, it doesn't come out so there's a sort of a media blackout the police are totally cooperating with that in, in many cases so yeah i mean that, that's part of the problem that this information doesn't get out the way it should you have to be online, and that's why I think that's probably why Amber Rudd doesn't want people being online and reading uh, this information. And and uh, you know you're gonna you're gonna think twice before you go to Oxford Observer and read Tobias's but uh, Tobias Langdon's article on Amber Rudd because well that might be considered a crime. You know, yeah, and some some and some poor uh, poor bugger is going to be made an example of and get this fifteen years. You know who, yeah. who's going who's going to be the lucky one? As I say, it does deter me because you know you know instinctively you can feel it uh, when you know in the UK that you can get a knock on the door and uh, mm -hmm. be, be dragged in and you know to be told that you're indulging in far right extremism. Um, just very quickly, Kevin, um, could you uh, change the subject slightly? Break down what you think uh, and who was behind uh, the Las Vegas uh, attack and what's been going on there, if you have any, because there's so many different theories swirling around. They can't, you know, to, to say that the official story is BS, I mean, the, but the, this particular uh, the, you know, story, they can't even get that right. They're changing timelines. <laughs> it's, a, it's a complete uh, balls up. And uh, what do you think's going on there and, and who, who's behind that and who's to gain? I just don't know at this point. It, as you say, it's a complete mess. The police keep changing the timeline. Um, there, this this security guard, uh, you know, was out of the country, and uh, I, I just don't. He didn't seem to want to talk, and not. But I, I originally thought that Paddock might have been a, 
victimized by some other group um, or terrorist group uh, and and then who did the actual shooting and then you know they left him and killed him in the room but I, I don't know I don't really see any evidence for that either um, and the fact that that uh, I, anyway I just don't know the only the only evidence the only witness I, I don't know why they don't have security camera footage and can tell exactly who went into that room uh, and all that uh, they, they it just seems like complete mess. And when you have a mess like that, of course, they're conspiracy theories. They're all kinds of theories. Anybody can have a theory now. And that's that's the problem. Nobody really believes it. So who knows what happened? I it's open, know. open season and what might be the reality. Yeah. I mean, that's just, it's just ridiculous. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, just nothing has ever. I mean, usually in, in all the cases, you get more as time goes on, you get more information. Here you got less and more confusion. <laughs> now it's just off the page, front pages. Nobody cares about it anymore. Yeah, I'm wondering if they are starting to uh, suppress the very nature of uh, of Islamic attacks, realizing because it is it is affecting and impacting people. As I say, with a huge march over here, and maybe they think that you know they've they've got to start repressing sort of ISIS Islamic terrorist attacks, and you know from even you know being identified as such, yeah. because the reaction you know it, it might actually sort of sink their uh, their plan for all this um, destruction. And again, yeah. that would be ironic, you know. Um, and then this guy would has to be ex if, it, if it was Paddock, it had he has to be extremely crazy in a way that nobody knew about before. He's no history of psychi psychiatric issues. I mean, I just don't understand how uh, you can, this could happen, that he could just flip like that and uh, just be, you know, commit the, the biggest mass murder in American history, I guess. It, it's just incredible. Uh, and in killing his own people. These are country music fans. These are Trump voters. Yeah, I just don't get it. Yeah, exactly. And of course, there are your traditional sort of white ethno centra, ethno nationals as well. Kevin, yeah, we're out of time. Exactly. Uh, Listen, I, I'm sorry about the mess up there earlier on, and I, I, I very much appreciate you taking the time to come on. Well, let's do it again soon, okay? All right, thanks, Kevin. Okay. All right, bye-bye.